listeners and subscribers. Hope all is well. So you know how I covered those uh, power outages that happened in South uh, America. It was in Paraguay, Argentina, and Uruguay. Okay, huge power outages. It was 50 million people in more than three nations, okay? And it was on their gubernatorial elections uh, to top that off. That's back when we had that target uh, outage, the cashier outage across the United States. That's when that power outage had happened in South America, okay? It was huge, 50 million people. And it looks like something like that is currently threatening the United United States, okay, in more ways than one, but here's just the first, right? We've got the severe weather that's threatening 50 million people in the U.S., just like we had the power outage in uh, South America that affected 50 million people. This is crazy, okay, from Wisconsin to Georgia. And while climate change and global warming, they always seem to be the ostensible answers, we know it goes deeper than that with the geoengineering and stratospheric aerosol injections, okay? But severe weather isn't the only thing that we could be looking at here in the United States in terms of power loss. Loss, all right, and the second one is more of a it's in the realm of what if, all right, but I wouldn't be surprised if all of a sudden, boom, you know, the lights go out and swaths of America and suddenly Iran, China, and North Korea are blamed for it. I mean, those are the three that have really popped up lately uh, on the news radar, all right. And we're talking about potentially some EMP attack or cyber hack on our power grid, and we've done that to Iran and other countries as well, hacked their power grid. We just did that just recently, as a matter of fact, right? Uh, and we learned that the U.S. just put sanctions on Iran for their naughty behavior, uh, even though there's evidence that the U.S. is fabricating certain facts. So here we go again. This is just more escalation, more rhetoric. Um, but as the people are going to realize we're going to be the one who's really going to suffer for this stuff, okay? But the problem is, is that a war between... Um, Iran and the United States, that could fracture into a wider conflict that could really encompass much of that entire region, all right? And who knows the the potential explosion of cascading consequences if that happens, because off the top of my head, and at least this is what the news has been talking about, we're looking at a uh, detrimental conflict near the Strait of Hormuz, right? The, the waters of the Persian Gulf and stuff, that is the main, the Strait of Hormuz is the main um, route out of the Persian Gulf from Persian oil producers. So basically, if there's ongoing conflict there and that route gets shut down because of, uh, you know, tragedy, conflict, or whatever, we're going to see potentially increased prices in oil, and it's going to affect the world's economy, okay? They're basically priming the people for this to, for this to be one of the potential fallouts. They're already putting in people's minds. And I think that's very interesting because, you know, the oil goes hand in hand with what's going on now in the United States with corn, okay? We aren't planting corn, and corn isn't growing because of the detrimental weather effects that I was talking about, flooding and uh, heat waves and every, everything that's been happening here in the U.S. and, and also across the pond. Uh, this weather stuff has been affecting our corn production, and if you know anything about ethanol fuels, and, you know, you, you may say that you don't eat corn, but corn goes into vast amount of products that we eat, also um things that we use as well in our tools. So this this isn't this isn't going to look good uh, if there is some kind of catastrophe. If we're talking about uh, the Strait of Hormuz being closed and that affecting oil prices around the world, and then on top of that, United States experiencing its own issue with its crops and stuff because of the weather. All right, but that's not. Uh, that's not the only thing to keep an eye on within the context of Iran, because I think there's a very, and I've talked about this before, at least I've hinted at it before, um, but I, and, and, I'll, and I'll tell you why, okay, because I think there's a very real possibility there's information about alien technology or records of what some call ancient astronauts existing in areas like, whether we're talking about Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, etc., okay, but that has been and is being obfuscated, okay, and I'll tell you one of the things that hints at foul play to me, uh, but you have to take a jog back in time, right, to the late 1990s, early 2000s, where there were those uh, German and French archaeological teams, they were making these groundbreaking discoveries, okay, in ancient Sumerian cities, even in ancient Egyptian places too, okay, but that's besides the point. Uh, now those groundbreaking discoveries were taken to the Iraqi National Museum, and if you fast forward in time just a bit to the U.S. invasion of Iraq, we see something interesting. We made a dash to, to Baghdad, right? And what happened after Baghdad shortly, or what happened in Baghdad shortly after that, right? 
uh, we had the looting of the Iraqi National Museum, okay? And the looting was investigated, okay? It was looked into. And the peripheral authorities involved, right, the ones investigating, basically said a lot of the looters seemed to be hired. Uh, but more than that, that some of the things stolen, especially in the basement, was an inside job. That it seemed to be an operation because certain of these folks, they knew where they were going. Some had keys. Some of the guards were conveniently missing. They bypassed expensive-looking fakes, okay? And even though some of the items from the museum's upper floors, they were returned, uh, the items in the basement are still missing today, all right? And that's where those groundbreaking discoveries would have been, the ones that those archaeologists were making and hinting at elements outside of the human condition, all right? That's what hints at, to me, a foul play, and that's not the only time something like that has played out, uh, and it's possible that that's what we're seeing again here uh, in terms of Iran, all right? This goes hand in hand with the strategic destruction of certain monoliths, structures, artifacts, and depictions, you know, and so on, uh, both within and without those surrounding regions spanning the years of U.S. engagement there, and we've touched on that before, okay? Uh, it's like they're destroying history because the area around the Fertile Crescent is where evidence suggests the bulk of light might have originated from, and if Werner Braun Braun, okay, was telling us the truth about the succession of supposed threats, uh, we've only got one or two more to go before they debut a th uh, threat from space narrative. Right now, we're, we're going through the, you know, international terrorist threat. Soon it's going to be the third world crazies, right, with this uh, migrant crisis. People are, we're going to identify third world crazies as the new threat du jour, and then it'll be a threat from space. Whether we're talking asteroids or, you know, space invaders, who knows? I think that uh, a lot of that is going to depend on us. You know, got to give up your freedoms for war. Got to give up your freedoms for asteroids and space invaders. All right, you got to do it.